In this session, we will review analysis of trusses. And this is something which is usually covered in, in mechanics of materials course or uh, you know a statics type of course. Uh, so before we go on to the uh, methods of analysis, let's briefly review the main assumptions uh, in trusses. Now, uh, so this figure shows a typical uh, truss structure. Uh, when it is used in practice and it has several nomenclatures and uh, what is of importance to us as of now is our two main components. Uh, one are the members of a truss and second are the connection plates which are called the gusset plates. So in general uh, we will have something like this where there will be a gusset plate uh, and there will be multi multiple members uh, or more than one member obviously uh, connecting at that particular plate. Uh, and you know, these type of uh, joints you would have seen uh, when you cross an old uh, railway bridge which are typically steel structures. So uh, truss members are connected through gusset plates and another important thing is that the line of action of the member forces pass through the same point on the joint. Okay, Which means if uh, this member force we consider, we see that the line of uh, this force or line of action of this force is pass, passing through a certain point on the joint. The line of action of the other member force is also passing through the same joint. Uh, the line of action of this member is also passing through the same point. And line of action of this force is also passing through the same point. So this is uh, a key feature uh, which one needs to consider even during construction uh, and design that it is preferable that all of these uh, member forces pass through the same point. And this basically uh, leads to a concurrent system of forces and hence the moment generated by these forces are zero, is zero. Okay, And this is uh, one of the uh, very fundamental assumptions uh, in classifying a structure as a truss. Uh, that is that the members are joined to each other by smooth pins. Okay, uh, Basically they do not transfer moment and this is uh, reasonable only when uh, you know the forces are passing through the same point or when we have a concurrent system of forces. In case the forces are not concurrent, uh, then they will uh, need to significant amount of bending. So even when uh, the members member forces pass through the same point, even then uh, there will be some amount of bending uh, because if you look at the nature of connection, uh, you know this member is being connected through let's say six bolts and uh, because it is connected like that, uh, you know, if you imagine uh, pulling this joint down, uh, this member, this member, all of them will have uh, some bending uh, in them. However, uh, uh, the, the key thing is that the actual forces are much more uh, than the bending forces. Or in other words, uh, you know, the if we say that the actual forces give rise to primary stresses in truss members and flexural actions or bending actions give rise to secondary stresses in the beam member, in the truss members. In most cases, we will have primary stresses will be much, much greater than the secondary stresses. And that is where this assumption of uh, pin connections uh, remains reasonable. Okay. The second assumption for trusses is that all the loads are applied on the joints. Okay. And this is mostly true. Uh, so what that means is that uh, the loads will be applied only at the joints. Uh, you will not have loads which are of uh, this type of uh, UDL or something like that on the members. And when and even if there are forces on um, members, they are converted to uh, joint loads uh, before analysis. Okay, let's now move on to the first method which you would have uh, seen uh, with respect to truss analysis, and that is the method of joints. So uh, this is typically applied when we want forces in all members of a truss, or if we want forces in most members of the truss. Okay. Uh, so basically equilibrium equations are applied on the pin which connects the members and hence the name uh, method of joints. Okay, Since this is a pin which is a zero dimensional object, there are two, two equilibriums of equation which are force balance in the two directions. Uh, so most of you would have studied it like this that one of the equations is uh, summation fx equal to zero and the other is uh, summation fy equal to zero. Okay, And since there are two equations, this method will, will work uh, when they are, there are at most two unknowns at a joint. Okay, So if there are more, more than two unknowns at a particular joint, we will not be able to solve for all of them using 
uh, the equations of equilibrium and we will wait for other joints to be solved first. So it is best that we, uh, the choice of uh, which uh, joint to be solved first and which to be solved next will depend on how many unknowns uh, we have to solve at a particular joint. And it is customary uh, or a good practice to assume uh, let us say a tensile force or the tensile direction of a force uh, to be positive. Uh, so initially since all the member forces are unknown, uh, we assume the same sense for all and when then whichever member forces come out to be negative, uh, they automatically we get a sense that they are uh, compressive in nature. So let us look at an example. Uh, so this stress ABC is given and we have to find member forces in all the uh, members. Uh, so when, when we draw the expanded uh, free body diagram, uh, we see that there are three pins in this A, B and C. Okay. Now uh, the pin A is uh, simply supported. So in addition to the two member forces, it will also have these two support reactions. Similarly, pin C is uh, roller supported. So, in addition to the FBC and FAC, uh, the two member forces, it will also have a third unknown force which is VC, the vertical reaction at C. Whereas the uh, pin B has one applied force of 500 Newtons and there are two unknown member forces. Okay. So, B will be the joint uh, from where we should start because B is the only joint with two unknowns. All the other joints have, uh, so C has three unknowns and A has four unknowns. Now if we would have found out the support reactions first, which means uh, it is possible to consider equilibrium of this overall truss as a whole and then uh, you know uh, that will directly give us uh, H, A, V, A and V, C. So in that case we would have used the three equilibrium equations uh, up front and we would have calculated these three unknowns. Uh, then if you see then all the joints will have at most two unknowns. Uh, which are the two member forces. So if we find out the support reactions first, then uh, you can go to any joint. But uh, here we have not find out, found out the uh, support reactions of any of the joints. So we, we have to start with a joint which has two unknowns. So if we consider uh, joint B, right? So, uh, so this is joint B, it has one horizontal force 500 Newtons. Uh, this angle is 45 degrees, so there is a force FBC which is the member force for member BC and there is a member force FAB which is a member force of the member AB. So we apply uh, summation Fx equal to 0, uh, from there you know, we find out FBC and then we apply summation Fy equal to 0 and we, found, we can find out FAB. So by solving this one joint we are able to find uh, two member forces. Now uh, next, uh, so we still cannot move to joint A although we have found out FAB because joint A still has three unknowns H, A, V, A and F, A, C. Right? Uh, but at joint C we see that uh, F, B, C has been found out. So now it has only two unknowns F, A, C and V, C. So next we move to uh, joint C okay? and why not A? Uh, this we have just discussed. So now we show all the forces for joint C and uh, then we apply summation Fx equal to 0, summation Fy equal to 0 and we are able to find FAC and, and the reaction VC. Okay? And now we can go to joint A and because the two member forces are, are now known, there are only two unknowns which are the reaction forces and again we can apply the two equilibrium equations and uh, we can find out the support reactions. So the overall picture uh, looks like this, uh, there is an applied load of uh, 500 Newtons on the truss. Uh, here we show the support reactions. Uh, then for showing the member forces, uh, we write them uh, usually without the sign, uh, but with the qualification C or T where uh, you know, T stands for a tensile force, tensile member force and C stands for a compressive uh, member force. Okay, so like this we specify uh, that uh, how much force each uh, particular member has to carry. Let us look at another example. Uh, so this is uh, posed in a slightly different way. So they are asking that uh, if the maximum force that any member of the following truss can support is 8 kN in tension and 6 kN in compression, uh, determine the maximum force uh, P 
uh, which can be supported at joint D. Okay, so here it's uh, like a design problem where for each member uh, we know what is the uh, load carrying capacity. And in very simple terms, this uh, load carrying capacity will be simply area of the member times uh, the allowable stress, uh, which typically can be let's say sigma y uh, or the yield stress. Uh, so, uh, so each member uh, load carrying capacity has been given and we have to find out what is the maximum force P which can be supported at point D. So obviously in this case, we have to find out all member forces because uh, uh, you know, for the trust to remain safe uh, or stable all the members uh, should remain safe in supporting the point P. So we need to find, find out among all the members what is the maximum tensile force being carried by any member and on all the members what is the maximum compressive force uh, being uh, supported by any member. Okay, so now the angles here are uh, 60 degrees so we just write a uh, couple of things which will help in calculations later. Uh, so, in this case, uh, let us say we find the support reactions before we start. So, uh, we can take point E, we do summation of moments about point E to be equal to 0 that gives us a vertical reaction at A, V A is equal to P. So, that is a downwards direction P and then we can do summation F Y equal to 0 that gives us uh, V E or the reaction here to be equal to 2 P and there is no horizontal force on this truss. So, the third equilibrium equation which is summation fx equal to 0 which will give uh, that HA is equal to 0. Okay, now, we have found uh, the all the support reactions, uh, but you may notice that uh, here we cannot start with either B or C because both uh, joints B and C have three members joining there and we do not know member forces in any three of them. right? So, we can either start from D where there are two members joining or we can also start from A where two members are joining. Uh, we can also not start from E where four members are joining. Okay. So, we start with joint D, we show all the forces, apply the equilibrium equations and we find out uh, the member forces. So, here uh, so FDC comes out to be plus 1.15 P, so this is a tensile force whereas FDE comes out to minus 0.56 times P which is a compressive force. So, after joint D we move on to joint A. Uh, so, here again we apply the two equations of equilibrium and we find out uh, the member forces. Now, uh, if once we have found out the uh, force in this member, uh, now we can go to joint B where this force is known but there are two members which are unknown uh, forces are joining. So, we move to joint B. Uh, and again we apply the equilibrium conditions, uh, we find out member forces. Uh, next we move to joint C, uh, again we apply equilibrium equations and find out the member forces. Uh, in this case, uh, after we have done the first three joints, at joint C only one unknown is there. So then we draw the overall picture where we are showing uh, that uh, this is the applied load P, uh, this is support reaction 2P, this is a support reaction P and then we are showing all the uh, member forces. Uh, with respect to uh, next to all the members uh, with the qualification of whether it is a tensile force or a compressive force. And what we see is that uh, the maximum tensile as well as compressive force carried by any member comes out to 1.15 P. And uh, now we can calculate limiting P. So, remember that uh, the maximum compressive capacity of any member was 6 kN. So, this 1.15 P has to be less than 6 kN. Uh, which gives P has to be less than 5.22 kN. So, the maximum value that uh, can be supported at point D uh, for P, P max comes out to 5.22 kN. Okay, next let us uh, next uh, let us review the method of sections. So, method of sections is typically applied when we want forces in few members of a truss. So, uh, so often times uh, we, we may not require forces in all the members. Uh, but on, only a uh, few selected number of members uh, we want to find the stresses or we want to find the forces. So, that is where method of sections is useful and we basically cut imaginary sections uh, through the truss and hence the name comes method of sections. And then for each section we can write uh, the equilibrium equations, uh, right? And for a planar truss we will have three e equations of equilibrium for any section. Uh, and then since there are there are three unknowns, uh, this method will work when there are at most uh, three unknowns at a section. 
So if the imaginary section is cutting more than three members of unknown forces, uh, you know that section will not be a good section to cut uh, because we will not be able to solve. And as in the method of joints, we again can assume uh, that every force is tensile uh, to start with and later on the signs will correct uh, tensile versus compressive. So let us again look at uh, an example here. Uh, so let us say this is a given truss and we have to find forces in members uh, G, F and G, D. Okay, so uh, this is G, F, uh, D. So we want to find forces in uh, G, F, this member and G, D, this member. So now here we, we make a cut like this. Okay. Uh, so this basically goes through three members. Uh, now uh, notice that we cannot cut the cannot cut like this because now it will one, two, three, and four. Now it will go through four members. So this is not a good cut. Uh, this is a good cut. Okay. Um, okay. Now uh, uh, from the geometry uh, we see that you know there is an there is a point O where these uh, members will converge, and basically. Uh, uh, you know, if we consider point D here, uh, so this point D here, so we see that uh, the member force FCD and FGD both pass through point D, so they cannot create a moment about point D. Okay, so the only forces which can create a moment about point D will be this FGF uh, and this seven kilonewton applied force. Okay, so. Uh, so this gives us an opportunity that we can write uh, equation of equilibrium of moment about point D to be equal to zero. Uh, the only unknown, the, there will be only one unknown in this equation, which will be FGF. Okay, and about point D, we consider the uh, you know the perpendicular distance. So we can either uh, consider this distance, or we can consider a component of the force FGF, uh, which is perpendicular to the line of action. Uh, whose line of action is perpen uh, perpendicular to point D. Okay, uh, so that uh, gives us three times FGF cos two to six point six degrees minus uh, seven times three uh, equals to zero. So that gives us FGF directly. Okay, now similarly there is an opportunity that uh, if we consider point O, uh, we see that FGF is passing through point O the line of action is passing through point O and FCD also the line of action is passing through point O. So if we write uh, the moment equilibrium about point O, we see that the only unknown that will appear uh, will be FGD and this is the second force uh, that we want to find out. So again we can consider the lever arm of FGD about point O, uh, calculate its moment. Uh, now, uh, from the known forces, uh, this 2 kN and this 7 kN both will uh, contribute to a moment about point O. So, they come here and eventually we can find out FGD to be 1.8 kN. Okay. So, in this way, uh, method of sections can be very powerful uh, for certain problems uh, where not all member forces are necessary to be found. And uh, always be on the lookout for points where multiple forces are passing through. Uh, so, uh, in this case, we were able to leverage point D for finding out FGF and point O for finding out FGD. So, even though this cut, uh, this green cut had uh, three unknown forces, uh, we never bothered about FCD because we were able to find a point uh, through which FCD always passes. So, uh, although we can write three equations of equilibrium. Uh, for any section, it is not always necessary that we write uh, the fx equal to 0, fy equal to 0 and mz equal to 0 all the time. It is possible for us to find different points about which we can write the moment balance and we can still find out the unknown forces uh, more easily than uh, having three complicated equations. Okay, so we will uh, stop here.